Welcome to Beyond Words Presents. I'm Lindsay and I'm sitting here with Whitney this week and today we are talking to Jackie Walker and Pamela Dittmer McEwen, the authors of Expressionista, How to Express Your, your True Self Through and Despite Fashion. Welcome ladies. Hi. 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 Welcome. I just want to remind everyone who's watching today that they can submit questions or comments via Twitter using our hashtag hashtag BW presents and through Google Hangouts app um, and if you like our show please support us by, by subscribing uh, to our YouTube channel and joining us every week at 1 o'clock on Wednesday. So I think to get us started first off um, fundamental question what's the difference between expressionista and fashionista? Well we feel that a fashionista is a follower um, you see stars, you see magazines, and you emulate those looks, and you want to be that person. But if you don't have the money, the body, or the wherewithal to be able to do that, then a lot of time your self-esteem plummets, and it's very hard for you to feel confident. Our girls are expressionistas, and what they do is through fun quizzes, they figure out who they are on the inside, what their personas are, the blend, and once they know their uniqueness, they have self-expression and they're confident. They're expressing themselves as opposed to somebody else. Okay. All right. Expressionistas. All right. So where did this concept come from? Well, um, I'm a personal shopper and I've worked with women throughout the years and Pam's been in the fashion business forever and we realized that a lot of women and girls who have everything on the outside materialistically a lot of time had low self-esteem. Um, Pam knew that a lot of people that read my first book shared it with their daughters and a lot of self-esteem issues started in childhood so it was just a natural progression for us. And then Kathy mm -hmm. actually coined the, the phrase expressionista. Because Wonderful. The word fashionista, the suffix ista has just become popular so we, we liked it, we coined it and uh, it's ours. It's trending so trending hashtag expressionista and girls should post their expression self I guess online. <laughs> well I forgot to hold this up. This is the book Expressionista for Girls just so everyone can see it at home. Cute cover. Who, what girls are here? I was just curious because we're going to talk about the personas next and I would love for you to define those but who's on the cover? Okay, the little girl in the purple vest, she's Miss Classic. She loves plaids and stripes and dots and very preppy. Okay romances in the middle, the ruffles, the scarf, the bow in her hair. A little print. Oh, a little minute print. And then on the right is our natural, very uh, athletic, simple dressing, ponytail. And there's others, there's other personas, but these three girls are representing these three. Wonderful. Okay, so everyone at home, take a look. I know because you probably couldn't see it when they were talking. So just curious, so can you give us a little bit more about the personas then and how you guys created these? All right, well, if you really look at people and you look at young girls, by the way they express themselves, you can tell who they are. I think every woman and young girl is born with an internal fashion persona. The classic, the natural, the romantic, the dramatic, and the trend tracker. And you're a blend. You'll take the quiz in the book when you get the book, and you'll figure out who you are and what percentages, and then you'll know why you wear things in your closet, but more importantly, why you don't. Okay, so what about the two of you? Even though we're talking about young girls, uh, what are your both of your personas? Pam? Well, we're, we're both classics in a way because every nobody is 100% a specific persona. So we both have a lot of classic in us and we both have a little, a little uh, dramatic. We both like some bold jewelry, we like some, some bright lipstick, we like some, some bold things. And then we both have a little bit of romance in us, too, because we like a touch of lace here and there, uh, a touch of oil, a little bit of flowery stuff. So, But primarily classic and add some dramatic, because we like some power, some pow pieces, and a uh, touch of romance. Wonderful. I took the test, just so you guys know. <laughs> just curious what I came out. I was a uh, romantic and, um, what was it, romantic... And I guess ro romantic and dramatic. Those were my two heavy ones, and I had a little bit of classic thrown in there as well, just so you guys know who your host is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I definitely think I, I veer to the romantic with bright colors, which is where the dramatic comes in. I'm not big on floral prints, but I do love ruffles and things like that, and glitter and fun ruffles things. are good for romance. Yeah. Well, we have a question from a viewer, Ruth, actually. Um, she wants to know, what makes this book, book different from all the others out there for kids? Oh, big difference in that there's the, the psychology component, the emotional component, the building self-esteem. We care a lot about readers feeling good about themselves and knowing who they are and expressing themselves and feeling confident. So there's the, the internal growth component that other books out there will show you how to organize a closet. They might have a shopping list, but we really get into the heart of, of who these girls are and teaching them habits and feelings that they can carry with them for a lifetime. Right, other books we feel are fashion books and it's telling you what to wear, what the trends are, and what to do. Our book doesn't tell you what to do. It asks you to discover who you are, and then you'll know what to do. I see. Oh, fundamental, be your authentic self. Right. So, OK. Well, I, I did mention today that we do have a great package um, that uh, Pamela and Jackie are offering. So what's in that package? The book, of course, the paperback book of Expressionista. And then Pamela and Jackie have also come up with a uh, Expressionista activity guide uh, that's for parents, teachers, and group leaders to use. And I read through it. It's got some great questions. Can you guys talk a little bit about um, that resource and how parents and, and guide leaders can use it? Sure, sure. We know that, uh, well, the book has a lot of quizzes and activities and suggestions and journaling prompts in it. So girls can go through the book and, and work through them themselves. But it's more fun to do with somebody when we can sit and have a dialogue about my fashion persona, your fashion persona, somebody else's persona. So we see this as a book that parents and teachers and group leaders can use with either one girl or a few girls to uh, help them on this path to self-discovery together. So our activity guide has some actual activities and it's got some, some uh, things that they can do like crafting things, making a vision board or going to a thrift shop with $5 or $10 and putting together an entire outfit for you to match your fashion persona. But then some of the activities are more discussion oriented that you will prompt discussions between moms and daughters or teachers and groups or girls and girls. So there's a variety of activities. We see it as a birthday party, a sleepover. Um, it would be fabulous for that. Wonderful. And so this package, so along with the guide, the activity guide, and the book, it's six ninety nine today. So order. Absolutely great book. There's adorable illustrations in the book as well of all the girls and their different personas. Here's one. Here's a messy girl. <laughs> and one who finally finds her persona. So um, very cute book. Uh, and this came out in the fall. So what has your experience been since the release of the book? It has been overwhelming. We're doing Expressionista events and mothers and daughters come together. And all of a sudden the mothers and daughters look at each other and have a new awareness of each other, why they have trouble shopping together or why they might buy each other a present that is not them. And to see that realization on a mother and daughter's face and see them leave our events with just smiles on their faces is really heartwarming. Wonderful. So can you tell us some stories from the book about girls who were on a path of finding their personas or um, were maybe by peer pressure and their friends were wearing clothes that maybe weren't necessarily their personas so they weren't comfortable in themselves. I, let's get some anecdotes. I like that stuff. It's fun. <laughs> oh gracious. Go ahead. Pam. Well, one, one story we have is that had to do with twins, twin daughters and how when they were born, mom and grandma dressed them alike. And just because they're twins, uh, everyone made the assumption they were identical. So then one year for their 10th birthday or 9th birthday, mom's treat to them was they could go to the store and each pick out their own outfit. And so the two girls separated and they went to different departments and they came back with totally different outfits. That one was very, very classic and one was very, very uh, natural and athletic. And that was a total surprise 
to mom and grandma that how different the daughters were when they'd been the same for so long. And uh, so from then on, they gave the, the daughters more leeway in choosing their own clothing. But until that happened, nobody, everybody thought, oh, they're just alike. They're clones. And they really weren't. They were very, very different. And once they were able to dress the way they really felt comfortable with, I mean, does, how's that changed for the girl? Well, they had, well, they're more comfortable and they have, uh, uh, they realize they have different personas, fashion personas. They are different. So now when sometimes they dress alike to please mom and to please grandma, but, but they know in their hearts and mom and grandma know who they really are too, that this, this daughter will prefer the navy blue and this daughter will prefer the, the red. And uh, it just makes for, for smoother, smoother relationships all around. So I, I think I was talking to you a little bit before we uh, aired today, and I was asking, so can personas change as we mature from, you know, from a girl in middle school through high school to college? How, how, what does that look like? I really don't think, I think that you're born with a certain comfortability in your persona and you really don't change as you grow. Um, people try to change you as you grow. It could be a teacher, it could be a parent, it could be a, a friend, a boyfriend. But if you stay true to knowing who you are and you can self-express who you are, um, you know, Pam and I did focus groups all over, talking to young girls of every economic level. And the one thing they all had in common is they wanted to feel feel beautiful and to be comfortable and confident. So I don't think you ever change. I just think you get enhanced or you might wear clothing that's more age appropriate. Okay. So do you have some stories? I, I was asking you about whether, you know, we have people out in the in the famous realm, I guess, who are constantly being styled a certain way by people. And that can change depending on what kind of movie they're going for, or what audience they're trying to book for gigs. So I was curious how that affects you know, teenagers and middle grade school um, age uh, girls, um, that influence from, you know, well, the, the, the famous rags, I guess you could say, People and, and Seventeen and, and those type of magazines. Well, unfortunately, it influences girls a lot. But we, we hope to portray the message that those people are not longtime fashion role models for us. That, that, that they are temporary, they are fleeting. That, that better role models are, are people who are, are not on the red carpet, not on, in the runways. That maybe the athletes or the um, uh, working women, the, the people who, the women who've gotten into the high power offices, that, that maybe those are, are better role models than than the celebrities. So how does a parent though, you know, obviously it's out there, it's everywhere. There's TMZ and, and like I said, many, many magazines on the on the rack when you're at the grocery store. So how do you teach your child not to look at them as the trendsetters and that they must look like them? I mean, on a personal note, I remember um, Doc Martens in the early 90s were very popular, incredibly expensive. And it was, it was one of those fashion accessories that my parents just didn't have the money to afford. And so I worked to try to save up my $140 back in 1991 to buy a pair of Doc Martens. And I loved them. But the thing is, by the time I got them, you know, the trend wasn't as big anymore. Sometimes you get, you're on the tail end of one. And of course, my mom's like, well, now you're going to wear those forever because they're so expensive. So there are kids dealing with that type of pressure as well. And I was curious what you have to say about that goes back to finding your fashion persona. And, and by the way, we all have stories like your, your, your shoes yep. and saving <laughs> up and how important a particular thing is. For me, it was Bass Weegeons in, in high school. Uh, but it does go back to knowing your fashion persona and identifying that. And moms and daughters can work together on this, on this is my persona, this is your persona. And the book, we reinforce how important it is to follow that, embrace that fashion persona, and, and follow it. Only buy the pieces of clothing that are in that persona, because then you're going to feel the best about yourself. And that's what being an expressionista is. It's knowing and expressing yourself, not somebody else. It's not tying your self-esteem into a label. Um, there's a story that I heard recently about a little girl who went to school and she had fake Uggs on. 
and everybody in the school, you know, told her those aren't real Uggs, they're fake. Mm. And um, she went home crying. But then her mother talked to her about that, and the next day she wore the fake Uggs, and when she was bullied, she exclaimed that she liked everybody else's Uggs, but this was her persona, she liked the way they looked, and that she was proud of them. And she diffused the bullying and was able to be confident again. So it's, again, just knowing who you are on the inside and how you want to portray yourself. Right. And it's very hard to, you know, raise confident, self, you know, possessed uh, teens nowadays with so much media and, you know, being told what's right and what's hot. Um, so obviously this book is a great tool for a parent who's trying to maybe have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with their daughter so that she's not being influenced by really people who are setting the trends in a school, you know, and that kind of thing. So that's and great. Reinforcing the message over and over about express yourself. Know yourself and express that. You don't want to copy somebody else. That, that's already taken. So nobody can be you as well as you can be. Right. It's like Pretty in Pink. Watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's great expressionista quotes in the book that really, really do that. And one of the activities I feel is that vision board because what we try to tell these young girls is when you're reading a teen magazine, let's create a magazine and put your picture on the cover of who you are, not some other celebrity that you don't want to be or can't be. Hmm. I think one of the uh, activities that you have in the um, the activity guide that you've put together for the bundle, which again it includes the book and the activity guide that Pamela and Jackie put together um, for $6.99. Um, is an activity where you said to give, I think, the girls 10 or $10, I believe, and go into a thrift shop. And this is where you have maybe a group of girls, like maybe a Girl Scouts troop or something that you're trying to teach fashion personas and that self-image. And you say, give them $10 and let them put their look together with that, with that money. And I think that's a great, and then they get to, you know, show, Little, do a little runway show to show what their persona is, what they were able to find and put together because, um, you know, giving the kid the power to do that, I think, is it's where it's really the meat is and where they actually start to hold on to that, take it to heart, I guess you could say. So Absolutely. I love that activity. <laughs> we, we got that idea from a mom we know who, a single working mom, and didn't have the money to take her daughter out to the mall every weekend and buy new outfits but she learned that she could take her daughter to the thrift store, give her the $10, and her daughter felt very empowered because she was in control. She could have anything she wanted uh, within the $10. So she could find 10 pieces, great. If she found three pieces, that was great too. But, but she felt she had a lot of control, a lot of power, that uh, it, it was a, a beautiful experience. We learned a lot from them. Wonderful. Is there any other activities you'd like to bring up that you guys put together? Like that one stood out to me because I thought it was just such a fun um, get out and do something and let the kids really have fun. So I love that. One of the things I did with my children, which, you know, I've talked to them about personas forever. And I found that when we were out together for lunch or dinner or standing in line at the airport, their whole vocabulary changed. Instead of criticizing what people had on, oh, you see that girl, you see this they were saying, oh, she's a classic with a little natural and a little drama. It turned it from criticizing someone into understanding someone. So I think if mothers really sat down and gave the quiz or took the quiz with their daughters, they will see how the vocabulary will change and the understanding will begin. Would you say that uh, little girls, young girls, young ladies are influenced by their mothers and how they dress? And if the mother doesn't know her own persona, how does that affect the child? You know, Pam introduced me to a young girl when we were doing our research, and I, the girl is so confident. And I said to her, where did you get your confidence? And she said, not from my mother. And I said, oh. she said, no. And her mother was sitting there and just smiled. And, and I, she said she got it through this, and she was telling us sports, all kinds of stories, sports, sports and, music. And, music. and afterward, the conversation turned where they understood each other's personas. And it wasn't that they didn't think the other one dressed the right way. Now they understood why they did what they did. That's the why is the whole question. Well, when you say she got it from sports and music, does that mean she was influenced by the, 
by athletes and musicians or just by the creativity that came out of being a part of those events or whatever? A, a sense of accomplishment that we, we asked her if someone is not born with self-confidence and self-esteem, how could they get it? Now that's a big question to ask a 10-year-old, but she had an answer. She said, get into sports or music, and it was that the idea of learning something, accomplishing something, achieving something will help you, you build self-esteem and self-confidence. And what wow. she called it, I'll never forget this. She said, you know, when you're insecure and you need security, you want to be in the spotlight. And she said, when you're carrying that ball down the field or you're playing that music in a band, the spotlight is on you and you get your confidence. So I think it's all about self-confidence. And at 10, she understood that. <laughs> that's amazing for a 10-year-old. <laughs> she That's a worthy quote. You mentioned that there's some really great quotes in the book. Do you have any favorites you'd like to share with us, Jackie? Oh my gosh. Am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> no. Um, I pick out what I like, but my mom and I have to agree. Uh, let's see. Um, in the store, if you like something, don't look at the size before you try it on, because we don't want people to tie themselves into a size. Again, there's no such thing as size, age, or weight. It's confidence. And um, Pam, you want to look at there, some others? We, we, have, so, so we so many. have celebrity quotes in here too, and we used we used um, uh, celebrities who we feel are good role models. Not uh, there are some who we don't feel are are really great role models. So we right. Have, we had talked a little bit about how Miley Cyrus's look has changed quite considerably in the last five years or so, from an image of you know. Oh, classic, you know, Disney brat <laughs> to something. I don't even know how to describe her. Maybe you, what would Miley Cyrus's persona be? Well, uh, it's another whole discussion about brand. And, you know, I think what happened with Miley is she was branded a certain way. And uh, just like any company or anything, when you brand something a certain way and you go off brand. It confuses. A lot. And she okay. established a brand and went off brand. And I think very dramatic way. So I think that that's a problem. But the one quote Pam just pointed out is the very first quote in our book, and I love this, it's by Zoe Deschanel. It's all about finding your own beauty, not wishing you look like somebody else. And I think that's really the brand of our book. Well, you mentioned body types, and it's kind of, a, you know, I was thinking there's a part in the book where we discuss the body types, and you don't use the classic, you know, pear-shaped, apple-shaped type of descriptions. You give them letters, and I'm trying to think if I could show it. Um, the, we have an image of the girls and their body shapes. Right. And when I think of young girls, I don't think of them as having shape because they are maturing, they're growing, and they haven't technically formally met their met, you know their their image yet. But I was curious. You do you do cover it, and I wondered why. Why do you include that in the book? Do you think it's an important message that parents have with their daughters? Weight is an issue with women and girls, and I think that. I've worked with so many women, and so has Pam, and what happens is we're, we're given a title. You're petite, which means you're short. Um, you're full figure, which means you're heavier. You're a pear, you're an apple. Stocky. Stocky. Young boys go to the, to the chubby department. Um, the Huskies, that's right. I had a man tell me one time when I was little I was in the Huskies, and it, I've lived with it ever since. But <laughs> why I love this is Pam and I felt that if someone said, you know, if you're a little smaller on the top and a little full figure and on the bottom, if you say, I'm an A, there's nothing that makes you feel bad about it. I'm an I. Right. I'm a capital I. So anything, and, and little girls are maturing so much younger today because of all of the things that they're eating. And, and so I think the smiles on these little girls' faces that I'm proud I'm an A, so much better than I'm a pear. <laughs> well, and let me share it here so that they understand what we're talking about. So this is the body types in Expressionista. So there's A, I, capital I, Y, and X. Right. A is fuller at the bottom, smaller top. Little I is petite. Big I obviously is tall and thin. And then you have the Y, which is bigger top, smaller bottom. Mm -hmm. And then the X, which is small waist. So okay. it's kind of like a cheer, like being a cheerleader. I'm an X, I'm an I, I'm an A, you know, but I like myself. And and girls are having to deal with this now. I guess I always think back to I didn't have 
I, I, it took me a long time to grow into my body. So clearly, I was, you know, sometimes you're all knobby knees and, and elbows and because you're growing later in life or sometimes you grow really early <laughs> so um, and mature and fill in. Um, that's another thing too is young girls and training bras and the first time you, you get your first bra and how that makes you feel and how you dress with that. Um, is, do you guys discuss that at all with your when you do these workshops? Um, we talked about that. We, we, what we do when we do our workshops is we talk about how we came together to write this book. And we talk about the personas and describe them. And then we ask the girls to come up. And we identify their personas in front of the group. And then we ask the group, how would you identify us? And then they get it every time. They say a little of this and a little of that. So we know it resonates with them. Um, we don't really go into, you know, unless they go into the situation with the undergarments. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes they will. I mean, they, they tell us everything. Women tell you everything. And so do I know. We are open books. I know. And that's the thing is that expressionista is what other people see and perceive of you. Um, I'm just as curious because, you know, that's the first thing that you put on your body. And that's where the body image issues can happen as well. So um, I remember... I think we had in third grade a girl who was quite, she became very um, developed very young and had to wear, not even training, like a full bra with underwire by third grade. And I imagine her shopping was incredibly difficult because she couldn't wear the cute little blouses that everyone else was wearing, but she had to shop in more of the mature section. So when you have a child who does mature faster and needs to start shopping, maybe that's not an issue nowadays. Maybe it's, there's more crossover with departments. But, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, I shop at, well, at the day, it was like the Brass Plum, you know, and things like that. You never went into your mom's department because why would you do that? that clothes is, those clothes are boring and not very fun. So um, how, do you, how do you address that with a child who does have to dress more or buy her clothing in more of the adult departments? Well, first of all, those kinds of questions they would ask us personally. They're not going to ask us that in front of a group. Okay. Um, so we, we do do the one-on-one -on -one consultation. But today, you can find any fashion in any department. And there are, they used to call them plus size uh, uh, stores. Today, like Torrid is a, is a chain that has all the latest fashions for uh, very, very trend-like and for, for girls of, of larger, larger size. And so it's really possible today for for women and girls of, of any size and shape to to wear anything. But let me also say that we talk about in the book how every fashion persona can wear every style. Like let's take jeans or lace. But it's it's a matter of how you wear it. Like a dramatic who wants to wear blue jeans or jeans of some kind. Well, her jeans might be ripped or studded or, you know, really distressed in some way. They're going to be really wild somehow. A classic is going to prefer and wear straight up and down, um, uh, no extra decoration. The romantic is going to wear a jean that's maybe got a little lace on the pockets or rhinestones. So there's a way for every fashion persona and so that includes every body size and type to wear every style. It's a matter of how you do it. Okay. And I think it's important for the mothers. Um, I've gone into a lot of stores, and I'm standing there in a lot of the major retailers for younger girls, listening to mothers talk to their daughters. And listening to daughters talk to their mothers. And it's so evident that they're not arguing about clothes. I look at each one and they're just a different persona. And I want to go up to them and say, here's this book that will teach you how to understand each other. And um, that's what I think is the most important legacy of this book, is bringing mothers and daughters and, and sisters together and grandmothers and granddaughters together. And it's such an easy thing that it's not just about clothes, it's about you. And it's an open dialogue. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, I was going to say, so when we, when Beyond Words first was looking at this book, it, originally the manuscript went into sub-personas, and I know that you guys had more of a focus on the, on the top five, but I was curious if you could talk a little bit about what that's like, because I'm sure there's some girls who are like, well, I don't feel like I fit into any of the five, you know, so I'm just curious. There are subs, and I, and I 
just was curious if you could go a little bit into that. One of them is the mood dresser. And um, there's two variations of a mood dresser. The mood dresser that's a dramatic mood dresser means that she knows how to do it and she gets up every morning and she goes in and creates for her mood. Then there's the mood dresser who's not quite sure who she is yet. And so we encourage her in the book to explore herself, take the quiz and see where she might fit in, into some of a blend of those categories. Um, some of the other subs are um, the logo lady, who's the logo girl. She's a division of a dramatic or a trend tracker. She loves lip, Hello Kitty, or she likes something that has a logo on it. So there's, um, you know, there's, there's different. There's the prep classic. There's the other type of classics. Um, so there's just variations of how, you know, you dress. And I think the greatest compliment one of the young girls said to me, she said, my, my sister said to me, I saw an outfit in a magazine that looked just like you. She <laughs> said, when I looked at it, it did. And I was so thrilled that she had learned who I really am. Gothic, gothic would be a subcategory of dramatic. And punk is a subcategory of dramatic. And Rocker chic. Rocker yeah. chic. But skateboard, that's a subcategory of natural. Or someone very athletic who's who the Nike person. That's still a natural and athletic. Right, who are looking through for clothes that they can move in and be very agile, I'm assuming. Yeah. And vintage is a subcategory of romantic. Okay, wonderful. So there's, all, there's a lot of subcategories. And accessories go in hand in hand with the clothing, I'm assuming. <laughs> They do. In fact, Pam and I were shopping together earlier, and it was funny because she was looking at a bracelet, and I was looking at a bracelet, and she bought this beautiful bracelet, and I didn't because I wear the same jewelry all the time. I take it off at night and put it right back on in the morning because I'm a very high classic. So when we got in the car, she got her bracelet, and I said to her, you know, I didn't buy it because I know who I am, and I wouldn't wear it because I wear the same thing. And we laughed because it all goes back to the personas. <laughs> Interesting. And Pamela, you change it based on your outfit. I will. And, and based on my mood, I like to have power pieces of jewelry. And so those will change. Right. And then there are girls who just don't wear jewelry, I guess, too. So. <laughs> this natural. The natural a persona is a really interesting one because girls and women that are naturals are really naturally beautiful. They don't wear a lot of makeup. They don't wear any jewelry. They're very athletic. And sometimes these young girls, and a lot of my female clients are naturals, don't feel pretty. They look around at all the other girls, and they want to be them, and they want to do like they do, but they, they can't do it because it's not who they really are. So they don't feel feminine, basically. Because yeah, they wanna, and, and so they're usually athletic. They're, they're in little white t-shirts and khaki shorts, and they're in track. And, and so these, these little girls need to learn that they are really naturally beautiful. It doesn't take a lot. They have to be themselves. Jennifer Aniston is one of the most famous naturals um, yes. on earth. And there's nothing. She's very feminine. She's very beautiful. Nobody would argue with that. But she's a natural. Interesting. She's very, very comfortable in her clothes and her skin. Yes. Right. Look at her commercials now. Very natural. Little black dress. And that's dressy as she gets. She's beautiful. So that's an interesting thing. So a natural can wear a little black dress, which is incredibly classy. It's, it's a, a classic piece. No jewelry. No. Just her tan skin. <laughs> every persona can wear every style. It's just a matter of how you wear it, and you will feel comfortable. Hmm. So I, I have a friend who is quite tall, and as she would say, she's a beanpole. And of course, we're not talking young girl here, but um, she would like to dress more feminine. I would say she's definitely more of a, a classic natural. Uh, her She likes to wear khakis, and she doesn't like to have open toe shoes and things like that. But uh, she says she wants to feel more feminine. And so I took her shopping, and I helped her buy all these dresses, but she feels like ruffles. She feels or flower prints or anything very feminine with lots of detail. She feels that she disappears, basically, in it because she is so thin. Um, and so I was curious, like, how can you, if a girl is wanting to feel more feminine, is it she not being true to herself, or can she play and find clothes that fit her you know, I believe that would, I think that's an I, the capital I body type. Um, how can she play with that and, you know, and 
bring a little bit of the feminine romantic into her wardrobe if that's truly what she's feeling she needs to do. The number one accessory for being feminine is pearls. So if she would put on a simple pearl stud earring, that would fall into a natural category, but give her some femininity. Um, okay. Just a simple strand of pearls on a simple dress will make her feminine. Above. So jewelry. Jewelry is a very easy way to bring pearls. in the feminine feels. Oh, pearls. What I would do, um, what I do with people who are looking for another look is I put that on them and I take them to the mirror and I say, do the blink test. I want you to close your eyes and then I want you to open them and pretend you're walking into a very important party. Are you comfortable wearing this? You may think in your head you want to do it, but it may not be what you really want to do. And you'll find that normally they go back to who they truly are and may be enhanced with just a small accessory. A cute little handbag with a bow. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Well, I was curious how siblings influence. I, obviously, you talked about the twin girls and how, but that was more of their parents dressing them in a style that they thought was appropriate. But when you have an older sister, an older sibling who has a lot of influence on you, uh, have you seen a lot of issues with that? Because I, just thinking back with my older sister, I definitely, I always felt like I was a trend setter because she was, you know, four years ahead in school with me. So she was never in the same school. And so whatever the high school students were wearing, I was wearing in middle school or vice versa. So um, I always felt like I was so cool, even though I wasn't choosing these pieces. And a lot of times it was hand-me-downs. Like, what do you do when you got hand-me-downs to deal with because there's not money to buy new clothes? That's interesting. Um, I'm an only child, so I don't have any experience in that kind of having a sister. But um, I do know that, again, sometimes if you're a dramatic, you can take the things you're given and make them your way. Um, we've seen young girls, you know, that are 8 and 9 and 10 buy a t-shirt and embellish it and do all mm -hmm. the, of that to it. Um, but I think that, you know, if, you, if you're wearing hand-me-downs and it's not really you, um, there's got to be a way, again, like Pam said, the thrift stores or something like that. Or, you know, a lot of times we're given things in our closet that you can change. If you stick with mix and match, dresses are hard to change because they're limiting. But if you're given an outfit, Perhaps you would, let's say you were given a denim jacket and a pair of jeans. You might want to wear the denim jacket over something else. Take the mm -hmm. jeans, separate it, and wear it something else. So a lot of times these girls in their closets will learn, I always say, how many ways can you wear it? It doesn't have to be worn the way it's given to you. Right, okay. Well, speaking of, of closets, I think one of the things, one of the topics you do discuss is that um, girls can have too much in their closet. I believe there's a story, a little girl named Zara, who is overwhelmed and is constantly missing appointments, is late to everything. She actually is late to her own birthday party. <laughs> and it's because she's got too many options in her closet. She's overflowing. And so, you know, I feel the same way. I have quite a large closet, but when I look at it, sometimes I see nothing to wear, and I hate everything, and I have those mood swings where I'm like, I need more clothes. I must fill this closet with more great things to be able to find the perfect outfit. So what's that situation? Because I know we talk, you talk a lot about um, closet organization and having a real true understanding of what is available to you and what you don't need. <laughs> Well, keep your out-of-season clothes out of your closet. So that's one thing to uh, cut down on the mass. But also keep it organized. I have all my t-shirts on hangers in a closet by color from light to dark. And pants are all together. And sweaters are all together and organized by color and, uh, and skirts by length. So that's uh, essential to keep your closet organized so that you know what you have. And, and when you, when a woman or a girl stands in front of her closet and says, I have nothing to wear, and the closet mm -hmm. is bulging, it's what you're saying to me is, I have nothing that I feel good in today. I have nothing that I feel comfortable and confident and pretty in today. So if I just went out to the store and bought something new, maybe that would help me. Um, sometimes it's a quick fix. Um, sometimes it's not the piece that you buy that make you, makes you feel better. It's what you think will make you feel better. So I think uh, what Pam is saying, too, is that, you know, a lot of times at the beginning of the season, and a mom should help a girl do that. All of my female clients do that. At the beginning of every season, you go through the closet, you weed out the things that 
were mistakes, have tickets on them and take them. I think there's a place for teens called Plato's Closet where you can sell your things, these young girls. Um, charity, so that somebody going to a birthday party might find something there. You know, if you look at everything you own at least once a year or twice a year, you'll be able to put outfits together more easily. Um, okay. But again, when you buy something in the store, you should interview it. You should say, do I love you? How many ways can I wear you? What will you do for me in my current lifestyle? And if it's not that you love it, you're buying it for the wrong reason. Right. And when you're shopping with your friends, don't be peer pressured into buying the stud rhinestone jacket just because everyone else is buying it. <laughs> Another thing, going back to our activity guide that's available with the book today, and this is something that Jackie does with some of her, her adult clients, is work in your wardrobe. When you find an outfit that you like, take a picture of it so you don't forget. And everybody's got cell phones or, or small digital cameras these days. So keep pictures of the outfits that work because two weeks from now, a month from now, three months, you're not going to remember that outfit you felt good in. So we recommend that as one of our activities is then keep those pictures together and keep them in your closet or in your drawer so that you can look at them and remember, oh yeah, I wore this shirt with this hoodie with these pants. And that's what Jackie does with uh, her shopping clients, that she'll put together outfits and take pictures, and here's the picture so that you know what goes with what. Here's your fashion magazine. The other thing, and I'll give you a great tip for women and girls, 75% of your closet should be in tops and 25% in bottoms. The okay. top is the least expensive. Um, it changes the look of the outfit. And then if you, if you select a top, let's say, you could wear it over a jean one day and have a look. You could wear it over a, another a color jean one day. You could wear it over a skirt one day. So that one top can make you five to seven outfits. Mm -hmm. And you know you're going to love it so much that it'll be a best. I call them best friend basics. Mm -hmm. so I always say to young girls, what are your best friend basics? And usually it's 20% of the closet. The rest was impulse. Mm -hmm. And okay. the national average women only wear 20% of their closet. And I think I'm probably a victim of that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take your guys' advice. I, I definitely think I know what my persona is, but I do have the tendency to do some fashion retail therapy, and I buy things that I'm probably not completely in love with, except at the moment. Or what happens is once it's washed, it just loses the shape for some reason, and it never looks exactly right again. So I'm like, ugh, I'm done with it. <laughs> I know, I know. And women do that all the time. We act out all our emotions in our closet. We don't know how to say thank you. So if I compliment you on something, you're never going to say thank you. You're going to tell me where you bought it, how you bought it, what you paid for it. 25 minutes on one compliment. So I think that when you go in and you're overwhelmed, you go back out into the stores to buy more stuff. It's not the more stuff you need. It's you need to analyze what you have and then what you need and make a list and then go buy back to the list. One top should make you seven outfits. Seven outfits. Okay. That's everyone's goal for this after this meeting. Um, we do have a question from a viewer online right now. Um, they want to know what would be the number one thing you would tell a budding young woman who has a total style of her own, mismatched socks, crazy colors, sh you know, shuns matching in any form. What would you tell her? Does that make sense? Go for, Go for it. I mean, what I love about this is, from what I'm hearing, she's very confident. There's a sock Pam bought me called Little Miss Mismatch or something. I love my socks. Mismatched. mismatched socks. I wear them. I love them. They're fun. Um, and that's your classic. That must be hard for you sometimes, I would think. It was. It was my 5% drama. <laughs> drama. But I like her. I think she's, she's confident. She's telling you what she does. I say go for it. If you like who you are and you feel good about it, it sounds like she's fun. All right. And also, so. one, one more thing is it's okay for moms to set some rules within reason. Remember the, the girl we told you about, the one who was super confident and whose mom would take her to the, the resale shop and give her $10 and let her buy anything she wanted? Mom said one of her rules is she did not want her daughter to wear anything with any kind of pant with writing on the rear end, you know, like words or... The Victoria's Secret pink. You see it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That, that was mom's 
you know, she didn't lay down a lot of rules. She just picked the most important rules or most essential rules, the ones most significant. And because there were only a few rules, daughter could, could live with them because mom wasn't trying to control her. But okay, yeah, I guess that's not the greatest fashion in the world. And I think it's the language that the mother uses. Um, instead of, you know, condemning the, the young girl and, and criticizing her, which will be in her mind forever, it's explaining to her why it would be better for her to wear something different. And, and one of the things we've done before is when I try something on someone and um, I always say, what do you think? And if I don't feel that it might be age appropriate, instead of saying, oh, you can't wear that or, or criticizing, I say, you know what, let's try this on. And when mm. we try the, the more enhanced and better piece on, then I say, between the two, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Hopefully mm -hmm. make the right decision. But um, there, there are some rules. Like, again, we can't let everybody wear what they want to wear. There's rules within reason of good taste. Right. Yeah, hey, I, uh, Cindy Lauper, <laughs> her classic look. I try to embody that when I was a kid. And I think the only rule my mom had was that um, no low cut, even though I had nothing to show because I was so young. <laughs> and I had to wear tights under the really short skirts, the ruffled skirts. Um, and so even on a hot day, I had to put tights on. So, But I rocked it. I rocked that Cindy Lauper look really great. So. <laughs> it's natural for young girls to go through phases of experimentation. And that's good and that's healthy. We also have a, a young girl in our book who tried all these different personas on, and every every few months she would try another one. And you you outgrow that. You you settle onto onto who you are, and then become more confident. And and this knowing who yourself. We and we want we stress this on the young girls. It does so much to ward off fashion bullies. Now, we haven't talked much yet about the bullies today, mm -hmm. but we know that this judgment goes on so early. We heard about a kindergarten class. The kindergarten girls started a sparkly shoes club, and if you did not wear sparkly shoes to kindergarten, they would not talk to you. Now, we know this stuff happens, and we don't know how to stop it, but uh, we, we know it goes on, and it goes on for, our, for the rest of your lives. It starts early. So the, if, what, if you can learn your fashion persona early and learn to, we've got two rules of Expressionista. The first one is love and embrace your fashion persona. That's the first rule. And the second one is respect the fashion personas of others. Mm -hmm. Only two rules we have for expressionistas. Well, once you know who you are, when someone insults you, when someone makes a comment to you, the reason if, if someone says, oh, you look fat or you look dorky or you look geeky, the reason that hurts so much is that inside us we're thinking, maybe it's true. Oh, my gosh, maybe I am ugly. Maybe I am fat. If I say to you, you look like you've got three arms, you're going to look at me like I'm crazy because you know you don't have three arms. Mm -hmm. but, so when you, when you know your fashion persona and you're loving and embracing it, then when someone makes a comment to you, it doesn't mean anything. It's meaningless because you know, hey, it's my fashion persona. What's mm -hmm. So we do a viewer asked if how do you shrug off the naysayers to your own style so that would really the the key is to knowing yourself first so that you don't even have to shrug it off it doesn't matter anymore you're confident about who you are and is that a tall order for a 10 year old though to deal with well that's why we're starting early, early. and reinforcing mm -hmm. reinforcing in our book there's a story i tell and a story pam tells when we were that age, mm -hmm. and something that happened to both of us, and how it resonates to us today, and all through our lives. Because what happens is what's said to you is imprinted in your psyche, and even as a 20-year-old, 30 and up, when, you, when a woman looks into the mirror, or a girl looks into the mirror, she sees every insecurity she's ever had in her life, and she sees basically what has been said to her by people on the playground, the men in her life, parents, siblings. So if we could start at seven or eight, you know, if I had had this book when I was seven or eight and Pam would have had it, 
then that comment that was made to me and to Pam would not resonate with us today because we would have known how to react. But we didn't mm -hmm. have a guide. You know, we just had words that hurt us. Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. can start with someone six, like this young girl at 10 who was in the spotlight, just think how easy your life would be. Yeah, I think that you all have your traumatic stories. I think everybody has something yeah. in their life that's totally scarred them. For life. Yeah. My father, I got a brand new winter coat, and he wrote my name inside, like, you know, because coats get mixed up when you're a kid. And fortunately, he wrote it on the collar. And so oh, that when the yeah. collar went back, it had my name upside down, and it was an expensive coat. And... I remember just being in tears because I wore it and people made fun of me because my name was on the back of it. And it was nothing to do with the fashion sense except for the fact that my father, who was a little absent-minded, made the mistake. But the thing is, we couldn't afford to, you know, get a new coat. So they got pink marker to match the color of the coat and tried to Aww. paint over the black you know, Sharpie pen that he had written my name in. And I remember I had to use that coat for a couple of years. It was awful. And I remember just hating myself when I wore it. I, I didn't want I didn't want anyone to follow behind me because they could see it. So I don't know what I mean, I think as a confidence, I felt like I was a pretty confident kid, but in that case, you know, you're you're crushed a little bit and you try to recognize that your parents are doing the best they can, but it still sucks. <laughs> and you'll remember that for the rest of your life. Like we will remember our things that happened in our lives and and when I think back again, we had no money, and so some of the things that I got, I had to wear that I wasn't real thrilled with. But I think that you know, in today's world, it's so much tougher. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 I remember being bullied, but nothing like today. So I just I just want to help these young girls get this message out that it's very simplistic to have self confidence. You just have to know who you are, but these young girls don't know yet. Mm -hmm. you emulate, but don't be a fashionista. Be an expressionista. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of that, I was going back to Zara's story. I think her, how the story works, and you guys can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, is that she did have too much in her closet. And so her mother, to try to solve the issue of her always staring at her closet, trying a billion outfits and throwing them on the floor and always being late to school, was to pick out two outfits that she, complete outfits that she liked the night before. That way when she woke up, she had two choices. And she wasn't allowed to do anything else, just pick one or the other. And through that, she learned that she constantly was putting a certain type of outfit together that she really liked. Um, and so she really didn't know what her, expression, her expressionista persona was until she started doing this exercise with her mom. And it came out that I believe she was a classic or a, something like that, where she was like, oh, this is what I want to wear every day anyway. So let's revamp the closet because... I was wasting all that time trying to be something that wasn't me. So that was another great example of um, how sometimes those exercises of the closet clean out and putting the looks together ahead of time can help you find that persona. Yes, definitely. It's so important. A lot of my clients, it's the same way. You know, they, I have some clients on television, and what will happen is they have to leave the home at 4 in the morning. So um, they have a rolling rack, and they start. they do their outfits for the week. And then in the morning, they just put it on, put it on, put it on, put it on. And then that way, on Sunday night, they pick out the next week. And it's like they know it's good. They know they look great because they did it ahead of time. Good advice. <laughs> do it ahead of time. Young I struggle. Young can do that, too. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. That's young girls can do. Sunday night, pick out five outfits for school for the week. Mm-hmm. And accessorize and everything. It'll be fun. <laughs> and do it with their mother, because their mother can act, probably could uh, benefit from doing that as well. So, sure. Another great exercise um, that we talk about a lot of times is a swap party. Because oh. let's say that you have things in your closet that you don't like. So you go to your girlfriends, five or six girls get together, and you bring the things you don't want in your closet, gently use clothing. And then everybody gets to go shopping and goes home with something new that's their persona. And that's kind of fun. And then you have some new clothes in your closet and didn't cost you anything. So that's like the new uh, theme of uh, slumber party is to have a swap party. That way they have all night to play dress up and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I have been to one. They are great. Um, it's a great way to clean out your closet too. I 
we in our office here have done jewelry exchanges because so many people, like you said, if you had bought that bracelet, it probably would have sat in your jewelry box. And then five years later, you're like, why did I buy this? So a few years ago, we everyone brought in jewelry they just don't wear it, or you know, sizes sizes of jewelry changes with the uh, you know trends, and it was awesome. It's funny because I, I I used to wear a lot smaller jewelry. Now I wear much bigger, clunky jewelry as I get older, and um, I don't know why that is. I'm sure there's a reason, and. Rachel in our office took all she assumed, and she nobody knew whose jewelry it was. It was just all gathered together. Mm -hmm. And the next, you know, over the next few months, as you start to see your jewelry on other people, you're like, hey, it looks so great on you, <laughs> and it has new life. Otherwise, it would have been sadly, you know, sad and alone in my jewelry box. So it's nice to see that. <laughs> and to be green to do something that way too: recycle, reuse, re, re uh, purpose. Yes. Well, we are coming to the end of our hour, crazily. That's wow. amazing. Is there anything else you guys just like to just get off your chest to tell the moms out there, or guide teachers and group leaders? And um, I, I just, I, I, it's been wonderful, and we thank you so much for this this time. Um, I encourage uh, parents, if moms, if you are on the PTA in your school, um, or if you volunteer at your school to please reach out to someone in your school um, and the library or someone and tell them about this book and explain how simplistic it is to teach these young girls self-esteem and self-respect and maybe do an after-school program in the school talking about Expressionista um, and try to reach out and spread the word because I think that if you can get in front of an assembly or get in front of a, a girls and boys club or you know girls club to be able to spread the word about what the message is in this book, I think it would just catch on and really, really motivate. What kind of groups have been working with your book? I know that you do quite a few organization, you know, um, groups. So I was just curious, like maybe a Girl Scout troop leader never knew she could do something like this. Just curious. Well, right now we're working with Girls and Boys Club. Okay. We've reached out to Girl Scouts, and we've also been doing special events at different places. You know, around the city, mm -hmm. um, and I'll be doing a lot of things in Florida. So we're trying to figure out, you know, how to get maximum ex exposure, so that we can get a legion of mothers that will go into the schools and spread the word. Because it would be fun, you know, to do little mini fashion shows. Everybody come dressed in it. That's your persona. Let's all understand who we are. Um, the quiz can be given out. The activity mm -hmm. guide. So I think we need to just spread the word within our schools because they're doing a lot of no lockout, no bullying programs in the schools. And that's well and good. But this would be a different handle to do that, to be able Absolutely. to clothing, which girls love. And that's where a lot of bullying comes from is how you look on the outside, not just, you know, the color of your skin or your hair, but the clothes that you're wearing as well. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned school so much is that, you know, with the, because one of the actions that a lot of school districts have taken is to go to um, uniforms, because they believe that if they can wipe out fashion, <laughs> you know, sense, then there won't be anything to bully. I mean, the fact that they, they recognize that clothing has that much of an effect on keeping the peace in a school. But you do talk about how you also can have your own sense of um, persona despite the fact that you have a uniform on. I went to a private school and spoke to a third grade class about personas. Mm -hmm. All the girls were in uniforms. And afterward, one little girl came up and she said, my name is Sparkle Girl. And she said, come here, I want to show you something. And she took her little white blouse and showed me her hot pink tank with sparkles on it. <laughs> Another girl said, I'm Romantic Girl. She said, I have a lace bow in my hair. Every one of them got the personas. And, and showed me how they had expressed themselves even though they were all dressed alike. It was wonderful. That's great. So they get to be themselves, but maybe in a safer environment in some ways. So that's great. Okay. Well, just to recap, so um, the package that we're selling today, uh, Jackie and Pamela are offering the book Expressionista, How to Express Yourself, Your True Self Through and Despite Fashion. Um, great book for girls. Um, Aiden up, I would say. 
even probably younger, but eight and up is kind of what we we shoot for. And then included with this for six ninety nine, you get the activity guide that they've both put together, which are great for parents, teachers, group leaders to use to uh, bring girls together and teach them about the personas and to learn about themselves and to hopefully gain confidence in what they show to the world. So, so check it out, use it, talk to your daughters, talk to your nieces and any other girls you come in contact with and practice and also look in the mirror and figure out what your persona is and maybe you need this book too. <laughs> so thank you both um, and thank you for joining us uh, so much and next week I just want to let you know that we have Anne Marie Holmes, she's the author of Earth Spirit Living and she'll be uh, here next week to talk about her book which is about bringing nature and well-being into your home. So, all right. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Bye. Bye.